Hi friends, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's episode of Driven. We are gonna go through and make some easy meals for weight loss. So I have a big issue with being properly prepared for my work week. It is something I struggle with anytime I am trying to reach my goals when it comes to any of my fitness goals really, is making sure I have enough good meals prepped for my work week and set myself up for success. And I know that's a common issue many of you have as well. So for today, I'm gonna share with you a couple of my favorite recipes, a couple lunch and dinner meals, as well as my favorite breakfast, mycelium husk pancake. So good. Before we dive into all that though, who is excited about Hocus Pocus 2 coming out? I'm a Halloween nerd, so very excited about this. Additionally, make sure you have joined the Driven chat group that is within my Discord group, the Buff Bunny Babes. If you haven't joined already, there is a bunch of us in there sharing different tips, tricks, recipes, workouts, supporting each other on the tough days. So I think you'll find it helpful in addition to the videos that I'm posting. So be sure to check that out. He is not impressed that I am showing you guys how to make my dinner versus feeding him dinner. Sorry, bro. You gotta have to wait. The first thing I like to do when I'm meal prepping a few different things and I wanna be as time efficient as possible is I get everything put out that I need for all of my meals. That way I know like what needs to go in the oven, like what's the most time efficient way to do all this. I'm also gonna set a timer on my phone just because I am on a time crunch and I want to make sure that I get this done as quickly as possible and just give you guys an idea of how long this specific meal prep could take you. So once I actually get going, we will start the clock here, but I am first going to start by just getting everything laid out in front of me. One thing I should mention about my cooking videos is you guys can't judge me for my kitchen because it gets a little messy in here and I am not about to be cleaning it up just to look good for the YouTubes. It'll get clean when it's all done. Let me show you what I have out. I'm actually taking inspiration from myself from a 10 year old video, one of the first ones I put up on YouTube called Muscle Muffins. We're gonna make those tonight. They're basically meatloaf muffins. We've got all the things out here, focusing a lot on whole foods this week. We've got the veggies, the meats, the proteins, and we're gonna make some breakfast pancakes, so. Let's get this timer started. I've got the oven going at 375 because the muscle muffins are gonna go in first. So let's get to making those. Choosing to start with the meatloaf muffins because they need about 40 minutes in the oven to cook. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get everything else done while they are cooking will be my goal. So I'm gonna use the lean ground beef. This is a 95.5. I'm gonna use two pounds of beef or 32 ounces, however you wanna measure it. One of the reasons why I love making these, and I have not in a long time, is because they are so simple, they are so easy, you just don't really need to do much with them. Yes, you need some time in the oven, but beyond that, not much prep time here. So all you're gonna need is your beef. We are gonna add one full cup of oats to it. To make time even easier for myself, I did purchase the already diced celery and onions. It was just one step I wanted to remove out of it. So I'm probably going to add most of that to them. We are going to add some salt and pepper. This is actually garlic sea salt. And then we're going to add some egg whites. So for ease and to not waste my super expensive eggs, have you guys noticed how pricey eggs are right now? Holy crap. We're going to just use the pourable liquid egg whites and we're going to use three eggs in here. Three tablespoons equals one egg. I need three eggs, so I'm going to do three, six, nine, nine tablespoons. A little tedious, but we got this. Now we're just gonna mix that all up. Yeah, you're gonna have to get your fingers in here. Additionally, I'm also going to add some garlic and then some tomato, basil, Mrs. Dash. Just seemed like, or maybe like if you have some Italian seasonings, that would be really good to throw in there too. But this should do the trick. And then I'm just gonna scoop a little garlic, or maybe a lot. All right, I just used a third cup to measure these out, which took care of the whole bowl. You'll see I've got each muffin tin filled 
with a pretty heaping scoop. They kind of come up on the side a little bit. So these are gonna go into the oven for 30 minutes. I'm gonna pull them out with like 10 minutes left and just add a little no sugar added ketchup on top to give it that meatloaf essence. And the oven is ready to go for me. So perfect timing. 13 minutes in, feeling the pressure a little bit. I'm trying to do this from longest cook time to least. So next thing I'm gonna do is a sheet pan of veggies. If you watched my last video, that's one of the things I felt like I did not do well enough this past week was incorporate enough vegetables. So I'm basically taking every vegetable I have and we're just gonna bake it. To me, roasted veggies taste the best. So I've got some oil I'm gonna use. You could use extra virgin olive oil, whatever oil you like. I like this sunflower oil, it's organic and it already has garlic and herbs in it. I get it from Wegmans. So I just feel like it gives veggies a really nice flavor. I'm gonna do some organic tomatoes, organic carrots, organic broccoli, and organic bell pepper. I do try to do organic where I can. Also bought some shallots. I usually just use my good old friend, the red onion. I thought I'd be fancy and throw some shallots on there too. So I'm gonna clean these up, get them in the oven because they can go in the oven with the meatloaf muffins. May slow the cook down just a little bit for how long the cook time is, but no big thing. You can put more than one pan in the oven, friends. It's called multitasking. Now for broccoli, ooh, I just like the florets. You guys can't tell, but Justice is down here. He's a little vegetable lover. Jason gives him veggies and he eats them right up. Bruce was never like a big veggie guy, but this little man, he definitely has some different eating habits than Bruce. So he's down here waiting for me to drop all the veggies. I also like my vegetables smaller. If you haven't watched my videos before, I like to do a lot of tiny veggies. I just don't like big hunks of stuff, especially when it comes to like broccoli, cauliflower, stuff like that. It just doesn't digest it very well. I do like to cut my tomatoes in half. Beautiful thing about this is you can do whatever veggies you like. Season them up however you like. I just use salt and pepper usually and my basting oil. They turn out fantastic. You can add them to any dish you eat. I usually make roasted vegetables for Jason and I on like Thanksgiving or Christmas. And I'm always like, why don't I make these more? Like why, why do I not just take the time to roast veggies? They are one of my favorite things. So when I asked myself today, what I wanted to meal prep, what I could meal prep to help myself be more successful with veggies, I was like, roasted, roast them, girl. They are your favorite roasted. Let me know in the comments what your favorite way to eat vegetables is. Or maybe you're not doing well with your veggies. Like I said, I do like salads. I eat a lot of salads in the summer, but coming into the colder months, I don't tend to eat as many salads. There's something about like a beautifully assorted plate of colorful, veggies about to go in the oven that literally gets my jollies off. Like it just makes me feel so happy and accomplished. So we've got all the veg good to go. I did add a tablespoon of my basting oil. I added some garlic sea salt on top. And then to really make sure they're saturated because I feel like that is the essence of a good roasted veg, I did add on a little cooking spray. So they just look beautiful. Look at the broccoli, the tomatoes, the carrots. Just gorge. These bad boys are going in the oven. They'll probably only need about 20, 25 minutes to roast, but we'll check on them. 31 minutes on the time check. Not doing fantastic, not doing horrible. Next up, I have a delicata squash. Some of you wanted to know how I cook these. They're so easy. This I am gonna air fry. Delicata squash, Jason Corey once said, tastes like a French fry. It does. <laughs> so for anyone who's jonesing for a French fry, uh, usually what I do with these suckers is I cut them in half, lengthwise, no widthwise, then lengthwise. Beauty of squash, and cut the little butt end off, is you can just eat so much 
much of it in terms of volume for the amount of carbohydrates you get, fiber, it's also very, very filling. So great to have in your diet when you are looking to just feel more satisfied. All right, so when you cut it up, I like to cut it like this so you can half it. Okay, so there's still some seeds left on the inside there. This is just my little tip. I own a grapefruit spoon because I love grapefruit. I find it very easy because it has the little serrated edges there. I use that to just stick it in there, okay? And scoop it out. You just scoop, scoop, scoop. It's a way less messy and like cumbersome than a spaghetti squash. I do love spaghetti squash too, but it's sometimes a bitch to cut. So there you go. It's all cleaned out. And then we're just gonna take it, flip her over, and I dice it into long little pieces. You can eat the skin, that's where all the fiber is. So I just cut it into strips like this. I'm gonna finish cutting up the rest. We're gonna give it a little bit of olive oil spray, and I won't really season it any. And then I'm just gonna stick it in the air fryer. My next protein option for the work week is gonna be some fall turkey burgers, I'm calling them. I just need a little something different with my protein to not get sick of it. So I am using the 94-6 lean turkey burger. I'm gonna make that into four four ounce turkey burgers. And to make it fall, I'm in the process of sadly shredding up a Granny Smith apple. I did buy a second one. I may see, I don't know if I'm gonna use one or two apples yet. I've never done this before, but you could chop it too. I'm just using a good old cheese shredder to get it into these little shreddy bits. It's gonna give it a little bit of a sweet flavor, and then I'm gonna add some spices to it too. So very easy, very simple to do. Sometimes just adding in those extra little flavors can make something taste so much better. Meatloaf muffins are ready for their ketchup. So you can see how they're looking. Light isn't stupendous over here, but I did about two tablespoons of ketchup on top of each of them. Like I said, they're gonna go back in the oven for 10 minutes. Veg are looking good. We getting steamy. So show you guys the squash before. Going into the Ninja. I'm gonna do air fry. I do everything at like 400 degrees. And we're gonna do it for like 10 minutes and then give it a shakety shake. To accurately measure the turkey burgers, I did throw the turkey in here on the scale. And just to know how much actual apple I'm throwing in there, I can kind of guesstimate, but we're gonna just throw it in there and weigh it anyway so that I can get the macros correctly. And I will do macros for every uh, recipe I'm making. I will throw the description. I will throw the whole recipe and the macros below so that you have it. So that's about 75 grams of apple. Because I've never tried this, I'm not gonna go crazy on how much apple I'm adding uh, for spices to give it a little fall flavor flave. We're just gonna use some sage. So it's gonna give it like a little sweet and a little savory at the same time. I'm not measuring this, I'm just guesstimating it. Hopefully I like this, I've never tried it before. I'll let you all know. And then shocking garlic sea salt. I pretty much use that on everything. The recipe I found shared that they also used a little Dijon mustard and extra virgin olive oil. I just don't think that's my vibe, so I'm not gonna use that. I feel like the little bit of apple and sage, I could probably add a little onion. Maybe I'll use up the rest of the celery and onions just because if I just throw this in the fridge, let's be honest, it'll be wasteful. I won't end up using it. So I'm just gonna add that to these turkey burgers. Why not? Then once I've got these measured out, I'm just gonna cook these on the stove top. Got the turkey burgers on the stove. They go. They do have a bit more girth to them <laughs> because of the fact that I added all the fun little add-ins. Recipe I'm gonna share with you, and this is one of my favorites, but I haven't really been having it in a long time, so I'm interested in adding this back in to see how it goes over for breakfast. So we're gonna do my psyllium husk pancake. I personally like the pancake batter chilled, so I like cooking it the night before and eating it cold the next day at work, but it does also taste good 
um, hot off the stove too. So play around with it, see what you like. First thing we're gonna do is use those liquid egg whites again, and we're gonna throw in there 140 grams. This is where it's so much easier to just buy the carton, quite honestly, just to have that on hand as a time saver. This is also a gluten-free recipe for my gluten-free friends. We are gonna use coconut flour, and even if you don't need to be gluten-free, I still suggest using it just because of how good it tastes in this recipe. The coconut flour adds sweetness, it adds volume, it adds fiber. So we're gonna add 10 grams of coconut flour in there. And if you didn't know, you are supposed to keep your coconut flour in the fridge. That is what helps it maintain its freshness. So I like to point that out because if it's not as fresh, sometimes it won't bake as well on the stovetop. Next thing that you may not have laying around your house is psyllium husk, psyllium whole husk. And we do five grams of this in there, which does give us uh, four and a half grams of fiber. This is what gives it the fluff. It makes it nice and thick. And then we are gonna use a little baking soda. I'm gonna use a fourth of a teaspoon in there. I'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon in it. I like to add it on top too after it cooks. And for sweetness today, I sometimes add stevia or Splenda, but I'm gonna use the stevia drops. These are the English toffee flavor. Just a few drops. I like it less sweet because I feel like I could just sweeten it up after the fact if needed. So you're just gonna go ahead and stir it up and this is gonna be your pancake batter. Because of the psyllium husk, you're not gonna wanna let it sit there too overly long or else it will get really thick and lumpy and kind of impact how well it cooks on the stove top. So it looks thin right now, but as it sits there, it will thicken up. Try not to step on JJ. So we're gonna go ahead and cook this on the stove top. Ooh, the turkey burg's getting a little burnt, huh? So what happens when you multitask too much. I'm a little rusty at the psyllium husk pancake, but do you see how there's a thickness and a density to it? It's, she's real hot right now, but I just wanted to show you how she looks. I'm gonna let her cool. We'll likely add some raspberries on top. The other thing I used to do um, is just cook one fried egg, one whole egg on the stove and pop that on top and it would be a little bit of a sweet and a salty moment. It's really good, thanks to Danica. She got me hooked on that. I'm not gonna do that for tomorrow, but just wanna mention that if you wanna try it out, it's really good. So let me show you everything. We are pretty much prepped and ready to go. We've got the pancake, that's gonna be breakfast. This whole thing of veggies. So my pan of veggies filled this entire thing. That will definitely last me a good portion of the week. There's several servings of veggies there. My delicata squash turned out awesome. I like it when it gets a little bit crispy, so the air fryer does cook it perfect. But if you don't have one, you can definitely roast them in the oven too. They taste just as good. We've got the turkey burgers here. They did get a little, a little crispy, which I tend to be cooking things crispy today. That's fine. I do like a little crisp. And the meatloaf muffins. I don't know why, but they, I just think they look adorable. If you're not into meatloaf, they may gross you out, but they are super filling. Uh, each of them is about two ounces, because if you remember, we used two pounds of meat. So having two of these is pretty filling. Um, also just really, really tasty. I like adding a little extra low sugar ketchup to it. I also just wanted to share one of my favorite higher volume, high protein snacks right now too. I've been having this mostly in the evening, but it goes good for work too. Sometimes I'll make this for breakfast. I just do the Faye yogurt. I have been getting the 2%, but as my macros change, I may switch down to the, one, uh, the 0%, but there's 17 grams of protein in here, five carbs. I like it just plain. I don't add anything to sweeten to it, because I will add some organic flaxseed meal. That does add some heart healthy fat to it as well as protein and fiber. And then I just happened to grab this last time I did my grocery haul, the grain-free granola. I've been really liking that. I'll do a serving, a serving of that on top. And then just berries of your choice loaded up. Raspberries, blueberries, strawberries. If you need a little extra fat, a little drizzle of peanut butter or almond butter on there, 
and it's so filling and tasty. So that's another option for you in terms of snacks or if you just want a healthy sweet treat at the end of the day. My stopwatch has me clocked in at an hour and 20 minutes. However, I'm gonna give myself about 20 minutes of leeway there between filming and doing other things. I would say this meal prep could take you 45 minutes to an hour if you're not filming for the YouTubes. There is a fly back to haunt me. Why are flies always coming after me during filming? That is gonna wrap up this video. I hope it gave you some good ideas for some easy meals that are gonna fill you up, make you feel satisfied, and make it that much easier on your weight loss journey and efforts. Share any of your new favorites down in the comments below. And like I mentioned, I will leave all the information on these recipes and macros in the description box for you. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did and wanna see more videos videos like this, more meal prep videos in the Driven series. Be sure to like the video on your way out of here and make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Fill you up without filling you out. What's up? Fill you up without filling you out? Yeah. Is that the line? I think that's the line. Is that the line? Because I am here as your registered dietitian to help fill you up without filling you out.